What's the next four words you say? But now I see him. We all know that song. That's probably one of the best known Christian songs we have. But do you really understand what it means? I mean, what does being blind actually mean? I mean? It certainly could be physically blindness or losing your sight. But I think it refers to something more. I think it's something that every one of us has dealt with at some time in our life. And that is being in denial. Now, Mark Twain, the author, he said, Denial ain't just a river in Egypt. <laughs> You get it? The Nile. The Nile. Yeah, it's still early. I don't hear sleep in there. Anyway, think of the times that we are in denial about things. Such as, oh, my clothes probably have shrunk. That's why they're so tight. <laughs> or, oh, you know, I'll just look at my phone for a few quick text messages. That, that's not going to hurt anything. Uh. Or... Oh, the amount of drinking I do? That's just like anybody else. Or, I am destined to play on a professional sports team someday. So that's the only thing that matters when I'm growing up. That you can fix a problem by doing the same thing over and over and over again. And somehow that other person is going to change. That... Your behaviors, your habits, that has nothing to do with the environment or even climate change. The thought that Jews are greedy, stereotypes that blacks are violent, Muslims are just here to destroy us. Or the thought that any problem in the world is somebody else's responsibility. Remember Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes comic strips? A little boy with a tiger? Well, he once famously said, I am not in denial. I am just very selective about the reality I accept. <laughs> well, that gospel reading we heard, it certainly is talking about healing, it's talking about blindness, but did you catch all the references to denial in it? Such as the neighbors, they deny that this man, who they've known his whole life, they deny that he was born blind. Or the Pharisees deny the fact that he was really blind to begin with. He's just, he's just faking it. Or the Pharisees then, they deny that Jesus could be from God. Because he does this healing on a Sabbath. And you're not supposed to do anything on the Sabbath. So even though it's a good thing... He must be evil because he did something on the Sabbath. They just deny that he could be from God. <clears throat> or his parents, they try to throw him under the bus, their own son. They just don't want to get involved. They don't get in trouble. Or even the blind man himself, he almost denies that Jesus is the Messiah. He comes around. I think that's the point of the gospel, is that we're all supposed to come around and recognize that presence of God. Yeah, sometimes tough, life is tough. You just gotta cry through it. I know, I know how it is. But sometimes we just gotta open our eyes and recognize Christ's presence. That God has good things in store for every one of us. Sometimes we're in denial, saying, I'll just figure it out myself. I'll just, I'll just cry through it. I'll just, I'll just get through this. As opposed to saying, wow, God has this grace right there for me. Now, all weekend, I've invited a Christianer to come and speak at all the masses about her own testimony about how God has opened her eyes. So, come on. Lisa also was the second reader today. So she's come to all the masses. And here's her story. So my name is Lisa Newhouse, and my husband and I have been going to church here at Christ Our Light for about three years. Um, we have a four-month-old son, and we went to our marriage prep course and met with our sponsor couple, and at one point we started talking about finances, and the guy was saying how in the beginning of their marriage they had some trouble trying to pay for their house, and so he'd been praying on it, trying to 
figure out what were they going to do, how are they, how are they going to pay their bills. And he read one day a scripture that said, you should only test God in his generosity. So he decided that they were going to tithe, they were going to give their 10%. So he went home and he told his wife that they were going to give 10%, and she thought he was crazy. They were already having trouble, and now they're going to give away more money. But after they did it, they never had any more trouble trying to pay their bills. So about a year ago, my husband and I were trying to pay our bills and having sort of the same troubles. And we decided, well, I decided, that we were going to give our 10%. <laughs> so my husband then thought I was crazy. But we did it, and we haven't had trouble paying our bills since. We've been doing just fine. And I think it's like the responsorial psalm says, where he's a good shepherd, and when you use the resources he gives you as he asks you, he will give you things that you can't even imagine. He'll refresh you. Thanks, Lisa. Let's give her a hand. It's amazing, that grace. I mean, that God is there to help us. And like she said, that, that whole idea that we, the only thing we should test God in is God's generosity. How, how generous can you be, God? Like she said, when you give to God... It always works out that you get enough. It's called tithing. Which means that giving 10% away. Now, for those of you who have any financial problems at all, I say try it. So many times, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I can't do this. Try it. It's not a, so much of a budgeting thing. It's a faith thing. I'm really saying, God, you know, I'm going to take care of these other things, and God will take care of you. Part of it is just simply setting aside. So not, not leftover money when you come to church saying, well, whatever we have in my will. No, but it's really setting up to say, okay, God, let me give you this. Ideally, that tithing is 10% of what you have to give to somebody, but that includes what you give to the church and all the other charities and stuff. Because you can't stay in denial that our parish here, how we operate, how we pay the lights, how we had the uh, muffins last weekend for hospitality, how you were notified about the tornado cleanup, but how we pay the staff, how we have become a vibrant and friendly community is because of your contributions. We don't get any other money anywhere else. The bishop doesn't get nothing. It's, it's your contributions. So, myself and the staff and the pastoral council, we have been trying to figure out how we can become an even better parish. What can we do? And we came up with two ideas. One is that we need to expand the ministry that we do to the adults. I mean, we do a lot of stuff with kids, we do a lot of stuff with teenagers, we've got that. But programs, activities, for the adults to grow in their faith, this means... Married couples, single, young adults, senior citizens, the whole thing. So what we'd like to do is to expand the staff in a little way so that we actually have a ministry for the adults. Also, the second thing we would like to do is to have more of a focused presence about social concerns. You know, right now we do a lot of things. Like next Sunday, a group's going up to Red Lake, our sister parish. We've got our Christmas giving program. We have befrienders and people who are at home. But what we really need is get some organization around all those loose ends all out there. And also more of what we can do to help other people. Parishioners and other folks. So the people who are struggling. Whether it's like programs we do or awareness we do or advocacy where we really like stand up and say, wait, this is, this is not right. So what we'd like to do is to expand our staff starting in July. And part of that involves Molly Wyron. She's Faith Formation. She, we're not losing her, but we're kind of changing her position a bit and adding some other folks. So here's your challenge. By the way, I'm gonna, you're going to get a newsletter this week explaining all that stuff. What it means and how that all figures out, the, the staffing and things. But here's your challenge. Like Lisa talked about, try this tithing. 
really setting aside money to give to the church, to others. And if you're not convinced about that yet, I, I challenge you to start just even increasing the money that you give to Christ our life, starting immediately. Like the idea is to increase at least $5 a month. At least. That's like a cup of coffee a week. That's the price. Now, for in that mailing, we're also going to send out what's called an automatic withdrawal sheet. And that's how you can automatically get funds taken from your checking account. That's what I do. It's, it's convenient. It's safe. And I know some people don't want to do it because they like handing in an envelope every Sunday. Ah, I'm giving the church, you know. So... <laughs> You can still do that. Just hand in an empty envelope. We don't care. We know that you paid. You know, you know, you feel that way. Just, you're gonna get envelopes anyway. Just hand it in. But think about what you can do. How you can invest in this parish. Like, for example, I give hundred dollars a month, and I do the automatic withdrawal. So I'm gonna change it. So I'm gonna give hundred and five dollars a month. And I know a lot of you make a lot more money than I do. <laughs> But it's the whole idea of saying, I, I want to invest in this parish. I want good things to happen with us. I, I think we are a good parish. But I think, and I'd like us to become a great parish. Reaching out to everyone. Doing more programs for adults, for home of you. And it means service trips. It means like more Bible studies. It means more like programs we're having. We're having a discussion this week on the shack. Things like that. But also reaching out to the poor. And parishioners who are hurting. And looking all around. What can we do to help them? I think we can become a great parish. But it's because of you. And what you can give. Now for those of you who have already maxed out your giving. We say thank you. But for the rest of us, if you can increase at least $5 a month, that's hardly anything, but even more than that. If you can, I say, I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. One of the ways we continue to grow as a parish is for people who would like to join, people who want to be baptized. We're going to call our two catechumens up at this time. That's Rebecca Terhar and Mark Dowd. Dowd. They have been working, gosh, for months, learning more about the church. It's called a program called the RCIA, Rights of Christian Nation for Adults.